Hello friends, in the previous video I said that if degree of indeterminacy IE is less than 0 then we say that the structure is unstable and I also said that if degree of indeterminacy is not less than 0 that it, it that is it might be equal to 0 or greater than 0 that doesn't mean that the structure is not unstable. So let's take uh, this uh, structure as an example. So let's say we got a beam and we got a roller support here. We got a roller support here, here and also here. Now if we if we calculate the degree of indeterminacy, i.e. this is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 minus 0 minus 3 is equal to 1. So we got the degree of indeterminacy as 1, which means that this structure must be structurally indeterminate and must be stable. But if you apply the horizontal load here also, will this structure be stable? No, this structure will roll in this direction. So what makes a structure stable? Now let's say that if you uh, replace this roller support by a hinge support like this, now if you apply the horizontal load, as you know that this support over here is fixed so, and it restricts the motion in the horizontal direction, this beam now cannot move in this direction. So it will be stable, so it will not move at all. So what is the difference between the earlier uh, earlier condition and this condition? So in earlier condition what we had, so we had all the support reactions as the vertical. At this support the reaction was only vertical, at this support the reaction was only vertical, at this support also and here also. So the conditions for stability, so what are the conditions for the stability? The first condition uh, must be that IE must be less than 0, so it should be less than 0. And uh, second condition should be the support reactions. The support reactions. So let me say that all the support reactions, all the support reactions should not be should not be parallel. Should not be parallel. So earlier with the roller support like this, all the support reactions are parallel to each other due to which this structure becomes unstable. And also third condition is that all the support reactions should not be concurrent. So before going into that and let me say that in this condition however you can see that uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4 support reactions are vertical and this support reaction is horizontal and due to this reason all support reactions do not become parallel. So all the support reactions should not be concurrent which means that all the support reactions should not cross each other at a certain point and uh, let's say that so let's say that we got a roller support here and we got a beam like this and we got a roller support here and we got a beam in this condition and we got a roller support here and here and let's say that by some meaning uh, we are able to hold this roller support in the position so here the reaction will act in this direction the reaction will act in this direction the reaction will act in this direction and the reaction will act in this direction and you can see that all these reactions they cross each other at this position so this structure is also unstable how so when you apply the rotation effect on this structure so it cannot move vertically or horizontally but when you apply the rotation effect it will rotate and it will rotate continuously and we say that the structure is now unstable what can you do to make this structure stable so you can fix this fix this structure at this position or you can fix any of these supports with the hinge or the fixed support so if you do that the structure now cannot rotate at all and it becomes stable so these are the conditions of the stability for any kind of structure so one thing that i want to say is so we got statically determined structures and we got statically indeterminate structures 
So to solve the statically determinate structures, we have got three equations of the equilibrium. And to solve statically indeterminate structure, we need the extra equations. So extra equations. And those extra equations are known as the compatibility equations. So solving statically determinate structure is quite easy and solving statically indeterminate structure is a bit difficult. So it is more difficult than solving statically determinate structure. So even though the structures that we see in our real life are statically indeterminate structures. So why we do that? So why we make the structures statically indeterminate though they are very difficult to solve? It's because statically indeterminate structure provide more stability to that structure. So higher the degree of indeterminacy, more stable the structure will be. So due to this reason, we prefer in real life the statically indeterminate structures.